guys, it's Daniela from California Carnivores and today we're going to make a bog garden which I'm very excited about because I love bog gardens. I actually grow the majority of my temperate carnivorous plants outdoors in bogs and one of the things I like about that is that you get to use your own artistic creative expression to mix and match your own plants and when you do that you make this really aesthetically pleasing visual centerpiece that allows your plants to play off each other's color and form and you've built a tiny little ecosystem in a pot that then you get to watch throughout all of the seasons and you made that so it's a really fun experiment it's really a fun way to spend an afternoon and if you haven't already done a bog garden or if you're nervous to do one or if you're new to carnivorous plants i really suggest that you try because it's a fun fun thing to do so i have in front of me a bunch of carnivorous plants these are all temperate carnivorous plants which means that they go dormant in the winter and this is a nice little collection. We actually offer a uh, make your own bog kit on our website. This is a few more plants that are in our bog kit that we would send you because I wanted to show you the maximum amount you could fit in the pot. When you order a bog kit from us, you get a pot with really good drainage, a couple of bags of soil that you get to mix up, and then a selection of six plants. And then you get to pot them up. Now you can make your own bog garden and your own soil mix at home. You don't have to get the kit from us. And if you're going to make your own soil mix, we recommend four parts um, peat moss to one part perlite. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is actually about peat moss. So make sure your peat moss is fertilizer free, but you don't have to rinse it. So you don't need to rinse any of your soil mixes before you use them. I get asked that so much that I wanted to say that right now. So this is what you get from us when you get your soil. It's this lovely little bag. On the top is a plug of domestic milled sphagnum moss. I'll show you what we do with that in a second. The majority is that peat moss and at the bottom you've got perlite. So what you're going to do at home is you're actually going to open this up and take the sphagnum moss out. You're going to use that to line the bottom of your pot because you see all this great drainage. That's wonderful for the plants but if you put your soil in there without something to line it the soil is going to slowly eke out and make your life difficult. So you're going to do that. Then you're going to take this and you're gonna dump out the peat moss and the perlite into a bowl, get it really wet and mix it evenly. This is really important, perlite dust, you don't wanna breathe that in. So do this in a well-ventilated area and be thoughtful about that. Now, I didn't want to have to like mix it up for you guys and take a bunch of time doing that, so I have it all pre-made for me now. And I actually um, wanted to talk really quickly about container choices. So if you decide to go with your own container, um, what you wanna look for is really good drainage. So you notice how, like, you can see, this is a crazy good drainage hole situation. That's because you're gonna put a lot of plants in a bog garden and they all want a lot of water. And if you pick something with like one tiny drainage hole, you're gonna be really frustrated later. So pick something with good drainage. Also, carnivorous plants do not do well with terracotta pots, generally speaking. So you're gonna wanna go with something plastic or a glazed ceramic pot. Again, if you get your bog kit from us, you're gonna get this pot, which is a great, perfect little starter pot. So I think we should get planting and I already have a pot about two-thirds of the way filled with the mix. And one of the great things about um, a kit when you get this is you get to kind of play around with your plants. So I only fill my pot about two-thirds and I really want to push this down. You want to compact that soil down and then I want to take my different plants and I want to put them in here and kind of see where I want them before I'm going to go ahead and pot them up. You want to keep in mind that the bigger, taller plants, especially this time of year, they just started growing, they're going to get bigger, taller, fuller throughout the summer. So you want to think about that. And you really want your tall plants in the back and your smaller plants in the front. So, and again, I have a selection of kind of a lot of plants because I wanted you to see the max you could put into a bog garden to see that you can actually really fill these up a ton and they look beautiful and they can really handle that as long as they have a lot of good drainage and a lot of water. So this Pinguicula primula flora is actually one of my personal favorites. This doesn't come with our bog kit, but it's just a stunning, stunning plant. It always makes me happy, honestly, whenever I'm watering. And it's a great one to have right at the front, because even though it's got those tall flowers, those little low rosettes right in the front make me happy too. This is a uh, Purpurea saracenia. So this is actually going to become a nice big rosette over time. And it's going to stay lower and beautiful. So we're going to put that in the front too, I think right there. And I've got some sweet little Drosera. And actually, maybe we'll do this in there. We'll put our beautiful Venus flytrap that's also full of volunteer utricularia. I want all of these in there because that's a really beautiful plant too. There. And then the last thing I'll probably pop in at the end is I've got these Cape Sundews. Cape Sundews do not come with our collection, 
but they're a really fun plant because they're just the most aggressively easy plant that we have you can grow. They flower prolifically, they'll fill up your whole bog with a bunch more Cape Sundews and really catch a ton of light when the light shines through and a lot of insects, all the sticky plants do. So I probably will put this right in here. So this is what I'm thinking my bog will probably look like. So how do you get the plants out? So some people would recommend to bare root. I, you don't need to do that. If you get your plants from us, they are in really good soil that doesn't need, really need to be bare rooted from. So in this case, here's also a pro tip. You're gonna wanna dump these pitchers out because they might have fluid in them, which is so gross when it actually dumps on you on accident. So I'm just gonna, just in case. Okay, so I just put my fingers over the plant and I wanna be really careful and gentle of these new pitchers because they're sensitive. And I'm just gonna squeeze on the pot until it kind of plops out. And he's gonna be difficult. <laughs> there you go. This is actually the um, sphagnum moss that was on the bottom of that pot, you can see there. So I'm gonna try and kind of take that off. So this is what I've got. I've got my beautiful Judith Hindle. And I'm gonna put that right there. I'm gonna put a little bit more soil underneath it actually. And I'm gonna make a little bit of a hole for the roots. And just kind of put it in there. We're gonna press it in a lot more thoroughly once we get everybody in place. But all the roommates need to kind of be in together before we shove everything in. So this is um, a filiformis. These are beautiful. These thread leaf sundews are beautiful. But here is another fun tip um, that I learned the hard way is that if you get dirt on the leaves of a Saracenia, you're like never getting that dirt off and it's going to make you crazy for the next like month and a half as you have to look at that dirt just on the leaf. So this is the one to take your time with and try to be kind of thoughtful about how you get out of the pot and how you pot. So see, that was a nice big chunk of soil. I'm just gonna push them in here. Another one, that's a sundew. I'm also putting these tags, if you notice, to the side. I'm gonna wanna save those. And this is a Drosera bonata. This is another amazing temperate sundew that is so sparkly and beautiful. But you see, I got like a tiny piece of dirt on that and that's gonna be there forever. It's gonna make me nuts. Push him down here. Do our cape sundew. But don't freak out if you do get dirt on things. This is gardening. You're going to be messy. It's, they'll recover. Everything's going to recover. So now we're going to do our purple rea. This one, oh, did you see that? I don't know if you guys saw that leaking on my hand. I forgot to kind of be thoughtful of that guy. I've had so many pictures spill on me without me thinking about it, and it's just really gross, especially if there's like a bug in there too. Put him here. I'm going to pull these guys out just because it's going to get more crowded. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more dirt in now. I'm just gonna spin it my way so I can kind of see what I'm doing, be careful with it. So I know I'm gonna be putting more plants in, but I wanna make it so that it's easy to put my dirt in. And it's actually good. You notice how these are kind of lower than the um, very top of the pot? That's okay, that's good. That means that when you get a lot of rainfall, a lot of water over the top, it's gonna to allow that water to soak in because a bog garden by nature really wants to be wet. So it's a good thing. I'm just gonna try and fill some of these holes now before it's super full, just to make my life a little easier. So this is like a selection of what you would probably get if you ordered a bog kit from us. So it's a good example. But you could also divide up some of your own plants at home if you already have a collection and do this with them, if you've been kind of trying to figure out what to do. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna wipe off my filthy little paws here before I start handling like some of my sticky pinguicula. Okay. So this one, pinguicula have kind of limited root structures. So this one's probably not going to come out. In it. Yeah. See, that, that came out really easily. It's kind of how I wanted it to be, honestly, because it's the easiest way to do that. And I didn't disturb any of the little ping leaves because that's another one that if I get dirt on it, it's going to make me sad. So we're going to do our rotundifolia, oh I'm sorry, intermedia. So this is a little tiny plant, so it's a little harder to hold. And this is just the easiest way, especially if you're a beginner, of getting these plants out of here. You could try digging them out, but it's just going to be harder on the plants and on you, and you kind of want to minimize the stress that you're putting your plants under. So I'm going to sit him here, and then let's see, the last one is this really beautiful flytrap that has all that utricularia. 
So all of these flowers are the flowers of another carnivore that's underneath the soil that has these sweet little bladder traps that actually catch microscopic prey so fast you can't even imagine. Hopefully we'll be able to see one or two, I don't know. So actually, I don't think you can see any traps, but all of this is the utricularia. And that's gonna actually go throughout your whole bog and be so beautiful as it flowers throughout your whole bog. People underestimate the impact of the utricularia bloom when it's all blooming. I'm gonna try and squish this down a little bit, but I don't want my utricularia to get hurt. So now I'm just gonna fill in the cracks and kind of push it in. You wanna push it in harder than you think, because you can kind of see how squishy, how easy it is to squish all this down. Oh no, dirt. Dirt on the sun do. Oh well, it's the sun don't, that's okay. All right, so I can keep adding more dirt and kind of keep pressing this in. You can see I'm pressing it very, look how firmly I can press this and still like get in more dirt. So I could work on this for a little while, but that'd be kind of boring. So we're just gonna skip ahead. Pretend like I got it all complete. You're gonna wanna really work that soil in to make sure it's super firm and nicely in there because basically the first rain that happens, if you don't, you're gonna see it all <laughs> sink and that's very, very frustrating. So once you have your little bog all completed, one thing that um, you can do too is keep all the tags. So if you don't necessarily know what you have but you want to know, you can either put the tags in around or I honestly, I'll get them all bundled together and I'll just tuck them in in the back like this. And then I know it's there. I can always check the tags are there to see what's in this bog, but I don't have to look at them all the time because I don't think they're as aesthetically pleasing as just the plants themselves. So that's just one idea for the tags. Then I would also say, customize this, make this your own. If you love it like this, keep it like this. But if you wanna put cute little figurines, if you wanna put rocks or coarse sand or fun little geodes, do what you want to make this your own little kind of mini ecosystem garden world. If you do use rocks or sand, I would actually rinse those first. But yeah, this is what you're left, you're gonna have and you're gonna to wanna to water it in um, from overhead, just to make sure that you get all of those pockets of air out and then you're gonna to wanna to sit it in a big saucer of water, which will come with your kit. And you can have the water all the way to the top, always sitting in the water in the full sun. And this can be your showpiece that you know you made. So I really hope you liked this, I hope it was helpful. Um, I hope you guys make a bog garden. And if you do make bog gardens, will you please, please post them and tag at Cal Cal California Carnivores so I can see them. Because again, I'm like a big bog fan, so that'd be wonderful. All right, I hope you guys have a good day. Happy growing.